You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus. Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. An interesting human phenomenon shows up here in uh, Hosea, the prophet Hosea's description, that while their land becomes more productive, the more sacred pillars, false worship, they do. So the more prosperous we become, the more distant we become from God. And then the other uh, contrast was the more abundant his fruit, the more altars he builds. Altars meaning false worship, because <clears throat> they had the one central shrine of, of worship. So <clears throat> this is interesting how we relate to prosperity. We tend more easily to turn to God when we are no longer self-sufficient, when we no longer are doing well and prospering. And when we prosper, we tend to take it for ourselves and think it's ours. And even if we think about our own health, let's say in the typical cases where we're blessed with health in youth and young adulthood and uh, prime of life, and we don't think too much about thanking God for our health many times. It's a tendency. And if we have a problem, a car accident, God forbid, or uh, some uh, illness that we don't count on having, and it could be serious, then we turn to prayer. And we get everybody praying. And somehow we have a type of a default syndrome where when things are well, God is not in the picture. It's ours. But when things are bad, we need God. And the presence of God in our life when things are well doesn't compete with our joy and, our, and the fulfillment each of these creatures give us. This fulfillment is enhanced because if we see all the nice things we have and they're ours and we own them, we, st- we got them, we kind of made it happen, we got a rise in work, a promotion, we got a better salary, we negotiated, we we did it, we bought it, we worked for it, we earned it, we built it up. But if we could see it as a gift, then we can say thank you. If we see it as our accomplishment and our possession, then we become protective and defensive. But if we see it as a gift, we say thank you, we smile. We realize we are loved. Imagine walking around the world and realizing God gave this to me. This mountain, I don't have title deeds to the mountain, but I enjoy it every day. The lake, I enjoy it. The sunrise, I don't own it. I didn't make it. It's a gift. And it's an expression, as a gift, there's a giver. And it's an expression of love. So my joy increases with my faith. And it's really a big, let's say, a mix-up, a dysfunctionality that we leave God out of the picture when we're prospering. We do without him. We go on our own. We're independent. 
It's ours. We think we're going to live forever. And we have it all. And we have it under control. We don't have anything under control. COVID taught us that. The whole world learned that hard lesson. We think we have it under control. So there's a great, uh, I think, a, a wonderful experience there that we do well to learn. And if we have a default position of falling into independence when we're in prosperity, we have to do something to change that. And after thinking about this this morning, especially after the live streams and my uh, personal prayer, then uh, we had the lords the hymns of praise of God and the, the psalm um, prayed was um, sing with joy to the Lord all the earth and actually two or three of the texts in the lords this morning they are already prepared they are prayed all over the world in rhythm and together with everybody and they were all about joy and I was thinking, gosh, we walk up in the, wake up in the morning and we pray lauds. What does laud mean? To praise God. To laud him. Laudare, laudatio. Summa cum laude. With great praise. And praise is always done in an atmosphere of joy. It's very hard to praise somebody with a sad face. We praise with joy. It, it causes joy. We share success. We share blessing. We share awareness of goodness, of gift. Uh, we, we compliment. We, uh, we rejoice. And this is very, very beautiful. So I in, uh, encourage us to find a way that we develop habits of praising and thanking and bringing out the joy, the beauty, in a small little thing, a butterfly, an insect, a flower, the face of a person. This is so beautiful to see the face of a person. And that's in the Psalms as well. To see your face, O oh God. Seek always the face of the Lord. When people see the face of another person, they rejoice. When you see the face of your spouse, of your child, of your grandparents, you rejoice. And to see the face of God. This is a cause for great joy, the psalm we had today at the Mass, is Psalm 105. And then we have the Gospel with the Twelve Apostles. This is extraordinary. The Twelve Apostles sent out by Jesus. Jesus didn't start universities. He didn't write books. He didn't build church buildings. He didn't uh, uh, get degrees in the university. He focused everything on the Twelve Apostles and the other women disciples. And he spends special time with them personally. In a certain sense, they are the big accomplishment of Jesus. He dies on the cross. From the worldly point of view, a total failure. But these people, as weak as they were, and as slow as they were to enter into the mystery of Christ, this is what he banked on. This is what he invested in all his time to train them, to prepare them. And they are the link the church has. That's why the church is called One Holy Apostolic. That's the first reason why the church is called apostolic. Because we have the access to Christ through the 12 apostles. And otherwise we don't have it. And so they are essential. The church is apostolic. It's also apostolic in the sense that we're also sent out into the world like these apostles. And then we become the link for people to Christ today because we share in that being sent out. People won't know otherwise. How can they know if nobody speaks? How can they speak if they're not sent? And they, that comes in the heart. Faith comes from the heart, that wonderful text of Paul. So here we have very concrete people, very diverse, and we leave it like that for today. They are given these, this great commission from Christ and very clear instructions. And obviously in the different circumstances throughout history, then the instructions are adjusted to the circumstances. But right now they are focused just on the house of Israel. Another indicator of how the church came directly from the chosen people that were prepared to receive the Messiah and he prepared them to bring the goods to the world. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.